Fora TV. The world is thinking. Assume you are wrong whenever you make a forecast and forecast often. If you must forecast, go back, look at your forecast, and be ruthless about knowing where you are wrong. Good forecasting is the inverse of traditional good research. A good researcher will spend a lot of time you know, carefully looking at the data, holding off, coming to a theory, and then finally reach a point where he can come to a conclusion and then ignore everything else that doesn't match the conclusion. As a forecaster, I can never have 100% information, so I do the opposite. I come to a conclusion as quickly as I can, and then I set out to demonstrate why I'm wrong, because I know if I don't do it, somebody else will explain it to me. The consequences of the failure to forecast often were sadly, but dramatically, demonstrated. On September 8, 1923, on the coast of California, south of here a couple hundred miles. This boat, this destroyer, the USS Chauncey, did not make it to San Diego. It was on a engineering run just after Fleet Week in San Francisco as part of Squadron 11 Destroyer Force Battle Fleet. This is back in the old days when destroyers huddled together. There were 14 forest stackers going in a line down the coast. And um, they ended up on the rocks because of a particular kind of forecasting error. Actually, only nine ships made it aground. Uh, the others made it uh, offshore. And here's the story of why. They were going down the coast, cruising at about 20 knots. It's a lee shore. Sailors know that's a dangerous thing. There was foggy weather. There was wind astern. But they were using what's known as dead reckoning. Uh, which you kind of guess at your position in the water. Uh, navigators know what this is. For lay people, uh, dead reckoning, as one Navy skipper explained to me, he says, that's, that's navigation by gosh and by golly and by God. And their calculated position is, exact, is where the dotted line starts there. This is the California coast just beyond Santa Barbara where the channel turns in. Uh, towards Los Angeles, and so they thought they were in just about the right spot where they should be turning in. This area, by the way, is known as the graveyard of the Pacific, at least to California sailors. And the trick here is you better make the turn right because if you go in a straight line, you're going to hit San Miguel Island, which they were very worried about that day because just that morning, a passenger ship, the Cuba, grounded on San Miguel Island, and one of the other destroyers, the USS Reno, sailed to its rescue. And so I said, for God's sake, let's not miss the turn. They were aware of the risk. They were also knew it was high uncertainty in their position, but they were guys, and they were reluctant to slow down <laughs> because they were on an engineering run trying to get a record. Well, they had some other technology. They had a good forecasting tool. It was a radio station at Point Arguello Light, station NPK, that would, you would radio them, and they would radio the bearing that you were on. The skipper of the lead boat, Lieutenant Commander Hunter, requested bearings. And they said, you are at 330 degree, three degrees. That was consistent with the earlier bearings they'd gotten, and his navigator, Lieutenant Blodgett, trusted the radio direction finder. Uh, but Commander Hunter was a little old-fashioned, and he was skeptical of this newfangled radio thing. And more importantly, the bearing that they gave him did not match his fix that he had made by dead reckoning. And he thought, well, if it doesn't match my position, it should be wrong. This is kind of like Heaven's Gate, folks. Heaven's Gate went down to Oceanside Telescope and bought a Celestron C-11 to look at Comet Hale-Bopp so they could see the spaceship flying in behind the comet um, that was going to carry them off this planet. They took it home, they set it up, and they didn't see the spaceship. So what did they do? They returned the telescope because obviously it was defective. <laughs> now, it's not quite that bad, but the immortal words of Lieutenant Commander Hunter, his instructions to Sparks, his radio man, quote, impossible bearing. Tell them we're south of Arguello, damn it. Ask them for the reciprocal bearing. The reciprocal bearing in those days, a radio beam kind of, you can either say, well, you're 333 degrees or the other way. And he said, ah, 168 degrees. 
two miles east of my assumed position, but that ain't so bad coming down the California coast. And he issued the fateful order at 2100 hours, change course to 095 degrees. That was their actual position. For those of you who don't know what 095 degrees is, that's a hard left turn into the coastline. The die was cast. In fact, the original bearing was right. Meanwhile, what happened was the Delphi's navigator wasn't the only one harboring doubts. The 11th boat back, uh, oh, by the way, one of those wonderful ironies of forecasting, the lead boat was called the Delphi. <laughs> you know, as a forecaster, I just pray for coincidences. Like... So the 11th boat back, the Kennedy, the navigator there had doubts, and he violated Navy doctrine. There were two violations of Navy doctrine that night. The first one by the navigator, he listened to the radio bearings being sent to the Delphi. Under destroyer doctrine at the time, only the navigator in the lead boat was allowed to navigate, and it was against doctrine for the other guys to even listen in. He listened in. He was plotting it. He was saying, we're not where they think we are. And he kept tugging the arm of his skipper, Commander Roper. He said, we're not there. Roper agrees, and Roper makes the second violation of the evening, which almost ruined his career. Destroyer doctrine at the time is the boats followed each other, and you always followed the boat in front of you. And you never varied off that because they had really thin skins, and the only safety for destroyers was to stick close together and shoot all at once. He, as the Delphi executed its hard left turn onto the coast, Roper says, I'm not so sure. We're going to delay the turn and kind of scooch a little out. And sure enough, they then saw the other ships piling up. He turned out to see he led the remaining ships to safety. He was court-martialed. <laughs> the lesson, part of the lesson is, if you want a piece of California geography named after you, drive your destroyer onto the beach. The mistake is immortalized as destroyer rock just off the California coast. But the real lesson here is about uncertainty. When the Delphi skipper hit the rocks along with those nine other destroyers, it happened because he narrowed his cone of uncertainty at the very moment that the data was screaming to widen it, to hedge his bets, and to hold off and just see what the future would bring. And his mistake is memorialized on this chart for all the rest of us.